hey guys i've had wonderful time many people have reached out to me and they've told me they've gotten accepted some of them i'll be sharing and i'm sharing as you're watching right now people just getting back and saying oh look here sheila i'm through your channel i've gotten um, admissions and uh, i just want to congratulate you for believing in me and for believing in yourself and going forward to apply i'm so proud of you and even for those who have not started please start this is the time to start we'll celebrate you and those who started and didn't get the right got rejected don't worry there is always tomorrow and I'm going to share with you how to go about it, the next steps. So today I'm going to talk about the next steps after admission. What do you expect and what are, what are the procedures, what will happen and uh, how well can you prepare yourself for the next steps. So first of all, congratulations again, once again, for getting accepted into the particular university. When you get to so the first thing, you'll get an email letting you know that you've been accepted and as i said congratulations once you get an email the second thing you need to do is you need to write an email back a thank you email this is whether you've got an admission with scholarship or not normally this is a good gesture and just to let them know that you're excited that you've gotten uh, admitted to that particular university that's how you start building relationship uh so you've got you you say thank you then the other thing that you need to include in the email, if you've gotten partial scholarship, you also need to let them know that you really, really need uh, more scholarship if they can help you explore more scholarship. If you've just gotten accepted and you didn't get any scholarship, also request them if they have any form of scholarship, any scholarship opportunity that you can explore, like research assistant, graduate assistant opportunity, um, among others so just let them know that you're interested to have more scholarship then uh the third thing that you need to do is that you'll do that will happen is that they're going to send you an email to send your official transcripts now remember when you're playing you did send in your official transcripts now you'll be given you they'll tell you the address for my case i had to send through the um was it FedEx or so they'll give you various ways to send uh, for those who are meeting me for the very first time I'm currently in the US doing my second master's in international development and I'm on full scholarship so I'm always very very excited to share opportunities that will impact the lives of many especially those who want to study abroad those who are looking for opportunities abroad and those who just want to explore uh, and uh, scholarship and all that so if you meet me for the very first time please take a second and subscribe if you're interested in such kind of content and also um sorry guys i went through a major knee surgery so i'm not in my best shape but um trying my best to <laughs> if you don't see me as you know my veteran viewers you know, you understand wh where we come from but i'm thanking god for the progress i'm thanking god for the love you guys have been reaching out and just praying for me uh please let me know where you're watching me from let me know if you've also gotten admitted let me know if you've gotten rejection we are going to work this together you know me i love sharing such information so it's gonna be better it's gonna get as you go by things will get better okay so where was i so you'll send your official transcripts and they will tell you how to send them it's not free normally it's like uh, the cost for sending the transcripts i think it costed me like 30 dollars uh, which you don't pick your transcripts you have you go to the university and they send the, the transcripts from the university to the university so you are just a middle person of just paying the transaction but the official transcripts comes from the university to the, the the particular university that you've been accepted in the fourth is that you'll be you'll be requested by the university to pay the uh, so they call it different. Uh, there are some universities that say it's deposit fee or acceptance fee or whatever fee. Normally it's between $100 to $500 or even $1,000 depending on the university. And this particular fee that you will be requested to pay goes towards your school fees. So it's not like it, it's not gone. It will, it will reflect on your school fees. I paid $500 for my, to my university. And when I came in, that since I'm on a full scholarship, that amount went into some of the things like the school bus, 
the IDs and that is not covered in the scholarship. So those other needs. So for this one, you just pay that. And also it lets them know that you are also, when you pay that fee, it's a confirmation that you're going to go to their, their university. So that's the fourth thing. The fifth is that so they'll send you an email on um, details on how to have your official email address uh, as a student. Uh, so just to get ready to be a student, they send you an email, a link to register your email and have the official uh, university email. I do have my official university email. They do not communicate to my Gmail. I have um, an official platform that I, everything is logged in. So everything is put in together and it makes work so easy. So whenever I get an email from that, I know it's right from my university and my official email account. The other thing that you also be required to do is that they will, um, they, so you have an email, they reach out to you for early orientation. So you can do this orientation either online or in person. And normally um, what you can also do is that you can check on that. You can check on the website or you can join online and just have a feel of the university. The next thing is that they will also send you um, the policy, the regulation, everything about the university. Please take time and read through. Those policy and regulation are very, very important and they build into underst you understanding the university, the expectation, some of the things to um, to know early, especially for my case, I had an issue with uh, getting accommodation, apartment or, you know, people who you can reach out to. I know I had a problem uh, because they have to check on your prior, they have to check on your credit score, like especially in the US, where is your credit score? When you come from international, you don't even know what credit score are. So as you go by, those are things that, you know, I still don't understand the credit score, but I have now a credit score. Then they'll also ask you for your past, um, uh, landlord's refer reference. If you want to carry that with you, uh, yeah, you can do that, but they'll ask you and all that. So see how the university can help you on such kind of things. So they'll send you those things early enough. And then once you've read that, um, they'll request you to send them um, information for them to send you I-20. So some of the documents you need to send are like um, your passport, you need to send uh, your financial uh, information, uh, either a bank statement, your personal bank statement, your parents' bank statement, your sponsor's bank statement, whoever bank statement is. And uh, after that, they'll send you I-20, then you need to pay service fee. And when you pay service fee, I have, I'm going to do a video on all this, how to pay, how to do I-20, what service fee and all that. Don't stress yourself. I'm just giving you the steps, things. Then I'll do a, a separate video so that I don't confuse you further. I know you're already confused. Then you fill in also DS-160. If you're coming to the US, if you're going to other countries, they'll let you know which form you'll need to fill in. And these are the things you'll, you'll use service, you use the service report, you use DS-160 report, and you also use, um, you use service number, you use DS-160, uh, that's the this application, then you will use um, I-20 for your application. If you are DS-160, if, if you are F-1, so depending on F-1 or J-1, especially for the US. Then another thing worth noting is that you'll be expected to travel to the US one month before your date of study so if you are you're starting your your date of study is on 8th of september you're expected to be in the us 9th or 8th of august so you've got a visa early and you think that you can park and come to the us you'll not be allowed you'll be returned on the <laughs> on entry because you're just allowed your visa will start a month before your actual date of your actual date of school 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 start date i hope that makes sense so that's it from me and thank you so much for liking this video thank you so much for subscribing thank you for commenting let me know where you're watching me from let me know if you've been admitted share with me those good news uh, let me know if uh, when you're coming to the u.s and if you're coming to colorado i'm based in colorado let me know if you need some help <laughs> Let me know if there's anything. If you're coming to the US, whichever state, just let me know which state you're coming to and we'll see how to help each other. 
Thank you so much for always being amazing and please share information if you if there's anyone who needs such information. Please like, subscribe.